Over the past few years, Headway's communications team has advised all the leading soaps on brain injury storylines, from EastEnders to Emmerdale, through Casualty and Holy City, with varying degrees of success. For the past few months, we, along with assistance from our colleagues at Headway, Preston and Chorley, have been assisting the researchers and scriptwriters on Coronation Street. Unlike many of the other soaps, Coronation Street has shown a genuine commitment to being as accurate as possible with its portrayal of Nick Tilsley, who has a brain injury. Nick is played by actor Ben Price, uh, who is joining us also today. And as part of his research, Ben has spent time talking with Headway about his character's emotional and behavioural issues as a result of his brain injury. He's also given the charity numerous mentions in national newspaper articles, while in November he took time out from his busy schedule to visit members and volunteers at Headway, Preston and Chorley. Not only that, but he also brought along a camera crew from the ITV programme Lorraine. The result, an excellent feature about the work of Headway on national TV. And here's a clip from a recent episode of the soap, followed by uh, the clip from the visit to Headway Preston. Between 20 to 50 percent of marriages end in divorce where the other partner is affected by brain injury. Oh, you shouldn't be reading stuff like that. 20 to 50 percent, yeah. Nick, it's just numbers. No, it's not. Look. No, I don't want to have a look. Because they're in black and white. Look. 40 percent of marriages end in divorce anyway. Those statistics mean nothing. What if we're in the 50 percent bracket? Nick, I am not going to allow our marriage to fail, okay? But I do think that we need to make some changes. Changes? What changes? Oh, forget it. It's probably not the best moment. What have you and Peter been talking about? Simon. And? I suggested that Simon stay with Peter and Kyla a little bit longer. Because of me? Because of your condition. And this is only a temporary thing, okay? But I think when you're on your own with Simon, that there should be somebody else present. Did you suggest that as well? Yeah, I did. But only because I don't want you to worry. I mean, you've got enough on your plate without second-guessing every decision you make. Look, Nick, please. Please don't be angry, OK? Because this isn't a slight against you. Peter knows how much you love Simon, and, and I do too. <laughs> angry? How could I be angry? Not what you're giving out for me. And like I say, it won't be forever. And like us. Sorry. Just want to look after you, Nick. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> that's the problem. What do you mean? All I wanted was for you to be my wife. And when you said I do, oh, <laughs> it's the answer to my dreams. I'm still that woman, am I? No. You stopped being that woman when you sacrificed your son for me. I don't have a wife, Leanne. I have a carer. When I find out in the story I was going to have uh, an accident, I'm going to have a, a head injury and be in a coma, I needed to speak to charities who deal with head injuries, with rehabilitation. So I've come to Preston. Uh, to a charity to speak to people who've been affected directly by head injuries, whether it's families or them themselves. This seems incredibly busy. Yeah. Uh, which is great. <laughs> this is incredibly positive for people to meet other people to talk about yes. what's going on with them. A lot, a lot of our service users are very isolated. They live alone um, and they don't have much social interaction. Yeah. So this is a really positive yeah. um, facility for them to use. I was assaulted really badly. Um, I've had three compressions of my skull. 
from that, I then spent a lot of time in hospital. You couldn't talk, you couldn't I walk. I talk, I wasn't able to walk. It's like going back to school again, learning to read, learning to write. Things are never normal again after a brain injury, and that's that's the thing you are, your character's getting across, because you show in that, that things that you could do before you're not doing the same at first it was quite it was quite difficult you just it's just a really good part that you're playing oh, i think okay. you're getting it across very well this is people's lives mm. that's what's important to get across this is happening for two people right. and headway uh, have an amazing uh, ability to be able to help people mm -hmm. have centers all over britain that you can ring and get advice what do i do if uh, to get more help Take a bow then, please. And last, but certainly not least, we come to Headway Vice President James Cracknell. Every year, James and his wife Beverly find new ways to support our charity, continually sharing their experiences of brain injury in order to give hope to others and raise awareness of the often hidden effects it can have on individuals and families. This year was no different. In October, James featured in an insightful hour-long documentary called Sporting Life Stories. The programme provided a glimpse into his sporting life and the drive that helped make him a double Olympic champion with insights from Beverly and Sir Steve Redgrave. Naturally, it also focused heavily on the cycling collision that caused James's brain injury. Yet again, James and Beverly spoke passionately, openly and honestly about brain injury to a national audience. The following is a montage of clips from that programme. I hope you'll agree that it's an incredibly moving and will no doubt have raised the public's awareness of brain injury. Four AM. It was a warm start of the day, it was very still, and I was enjoying being out there. Then? Then, uh, I can't remember anything for a month. The phone rang at about seven o'clock in the morning and I just, it's, it's really funny, I just knew something was wrong. I just knew. Been hit by a fuel truck. The 70 mile an hour, the wound rear of the fuel truck hit the back of my helmet. It just whacked me on the back of the head and threw me up in the air and snapped the frame of my bike. And any pictures I've seen, the helmet covered in blood and my shirt had been cut off me, and, and the bike was left by the side of the road while I got taken off in the helicopter. I didn't know if he'd be alive or dead when I got off the plane at the other end. I really didn't. Was I going to live or, or had it gone the other way? We went from not knowing if he was going to live to how badly injured he would be, how badly brain damaged he was going to be. A traumatic brain injury. I fractured the skull here and down the side, and effectively my, my brain hit the front of my skull. So from both sides, front and back, got pretty mashed up. The frontal lobes are the ones are the, here, which are left with the, the longest damage, and they control anger, mood, motivation, facial recognition, the ability to plan, you know, just all of which are key attributes in you know, cognitive thinking. People can understand if you say you've had a heart attack what it may mean. 
but with the brain injury, it's like, well, what does it mean? It's the, it's the unseen injury. After a brain injury, you react differently to situations. My kids had one dad for six years and a different one for the last three, and it's both of us coming to terms with that. You know, when people say, how is James, how are you? I could answer that question differently every week, every day of the last three years. His mood can be quite low sometimes, and it's, it, you know, it's, it's a struggle. It still is. You get angry at different things. You, you're not as articulate. I've been left with epilepsy, so I've had a number of seizures after which you, after which seizures you can't drive for a year. You lose a lot of empathy, a lot of motivation. And so all those things affect your life. The statistic is that 80% of people with a brain injury get divorced. You've always set yourself targets. What's the one thing you now most want to achieve? Probably hear Bev say you're back. It'd be nice to hear that. Will that happen? I believe it will. So to James and Bev, thank you for your continued support. It means so much to everyone in this room, and indeed our members, volunteers and supporters right across the UK. Please stand up and take a bow. You deserve that.